Good morning, everyone. Today's video, I'm going to share some things about being productive. I've been asked a lot how I stay in the gym, how I make time for this, how I do this. So I'm going to share with you guys some of the things that I do to stay productive. Um, if you didn't know, I used to be an athlete. I used to play volleyball. Um, and when that time in my life ended, I started to struggle with being productive because of course volleyball took up all of my days every single day. I was younger, didn't have much to do but play volleyball, didn't want to do anything but play volleyball. So when that ended, I did struggle with being productive. But over the past year or so, I've probably been the most productive that I've ever been within my 24 years of life. And I want to share with you the major things that have helped me. Number one on the list, I think I give most of my credit when it comes to me being productive to this making a to-do list i make a to-do list every single morning if not the night before of everything that i'm going to do that day and i want to emphasize being as detailed as possible De not detailed as in writing out every detail as to what you have to do but every little thing that you have to do i literally start my list off with making my bed do i need to write that down no i make my bed every single morning but I found that when I put more on my to-do list and mark them off, I like to see that progress. So if I see make my bed, get dressed, take my shower, and I mark those off, I feel like I'm already getting stuff done. So it's like the visual of me seeing myself marking things off the list, if that makes sense. So doing the little things like that has helped me when it comes to writing my to-do list. Be very detailed, write down your to-do list every single morning so that you know what you have to do, you can see what you have left, you can see what you've done. That helps me tremendously. That's probably my number one thing. I write my to-do list every single day. It's literally already, it is 11.26 a.m. and I've already gotten up, cleaned my room, showered, washed my hair. If you know, you know, that's an hour long process in itself. Made my coffee, drank my greens. I am working on making sure I drink, ugh, I hate room temperature water, but I'm trying to drink room temperature water, at least a cup before I do anything, or eat or drink anything in the morning. So I do a cup of water, drank that, made my coffee, wrote out my to-do list, I've got my dogs all situated, been to the grocery store to get dog food, got gas, and that's half of my list and it's only 11.30 a.m. And like the majority of my stuff I still have to do, I can do from sitting right here. So. That goes into another thing. Get your stuff done early. It doesn't have to be 5 a.m. when it's dark outside. I don't get up when it's dark outside anymore. I used to, but it's it's just not for me. What works for me, I get up. I got up at like 8.15 this morning. I was awake at like 7.30, but I got out of bed at like 8.15. Got up, took a shower, and it's 11.30 and half my to-do list is done. Get your, physical, like, get your things done early before you sit down. It helps. Knock them all out before you sit down. That goes into another thing. I try to get all of my things done consecutively. So before sitting down, sitting down is where I fail when it comes to being productive. Doing your things consecutively, meaning getting your tasks done one after the other. Don't take breaks. I'm not saying, okay, I won't say don't take breaks. Do what works for you. For me, I cannot take a break. I have to get it all done and then sit down. If I sit down, that five minute break turns into a two hour break and now it's 4 p.m. and I have a crap ton of stuff to do. We don't want that. So I like to get all my stuff done early, one after the other, knock them all out. Then you can relax. Then you can do the stuff you wanna do. It makes it easier to stay productive and get the things done that you need to get done. Another thing that I wanted to touch base on, try not to do anything in your room. For me, if I sit in my bed or lay in my bed, if I try to write my to-do list in my bed, if I try to get things done in my bed, I end up laying in my bed for the next two hours. Don't do that. Try to get your stuff done outside of your room so that you look forward to going to bed at night, getting good rest, wake it up, doing it again tomorrow. So that's what works for me. I like to sit right here. I'll go sit on the couch. Sometimes I'll sit in my uh, garage. 
not with the clothes like of course but still in my garage in my workout area or in the backyard with my dogs and it helps because then I'm looking forward to getting in my bed at nighttime and going to sleep <laughs> setting alarms and sticking to a schedule I set alarms for everything so I set alarm to wake up in the morning I set an alarm to make sure I'm out of bed by that time in the morning so my alarm goes off at 7 30 I have another one at 8.15 that's like, girl, get up. So I set an alarm an hour before I have to be somewhere to make sure I'm getting ready and leave on time. Whenever I do my volleyball training or personal training, I set an alarm before I need to leave the house, set an alarm by the time I need to be done and out of the shower so I can start my next thing, I set alarms. That helps me a lot. And then sticking to a schedule, which kind of feeds into that, is waking up at the same time every day, no matter if you have nothing to do or if you have a, a lot of stuff to do i like to wake up at the same time every single day and making sure to get dressed this is something that i struggled with um if i didn't have anything to do i would pretty much be in pajamas all day like i'm at my house why i get more dirty clothes like <laughs> make yourself feel good every single morning look presentable every single morning dress and do like the person that you want to be would dress and do. Simple as that. I did struggle with that for a long time. Like I'm not leaving the house. Why do I need to get more clothes dirty? Why do I need to waste time doing this, this? It matters, it really does. Like I, if I could live in a t-shirt and shorts every single day, I would have done that. But now I like to be all cutesy. I like to have my hair done. I like to have cute clothes on. Cause who knows when I need to jump up and go somewhere or do something or see somebody like, Make yourself feel good. Be presentable every single day. Next, surround yourself with people that have goals similar to yours. This is also something that I've had to work through. Um, I had to learn to stop worrying about what other people think, not so much feel, but have to say about what I've got going on or what I'm doing compared to what they're doing. Surround yourself with people that want to do and reach the same places that you do. In my case, my fiance, oh, lifesaver. Keeps me in check, I keep him in check. What you do and what the people around you do rubs off on you or the people around you. It really does. So when you're surrounded by people that are lazy, you're gonna be lazy. You surround yourself by people that have goals and are driven and motivated and being productive every day you'll eventually get there too so i do give credit to him a big part of why i have become so productive um because he's naturally just go 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 ambitious he's motivated all the time disciplined and that's rubbed off on me and i'm very thankful for that so my next thing this is also a big one that i have engraved into my brain the way that you speak to yourself matters one of the main things that i tell myself now that i've found my place in being productive is to remind yourself that you get to do the things that you're doing you don't oh, i have to do this oh i have to do this oh i need to do this no you get to do those things not everyone gets to do those things so i remind myself of that a lot everything that i have and do and am able to do and capable of doing is because i was blessed enough to do so and i get to do those things so i remind myself of that pretty often um not everyone is as blessed as you so do the things that you're able to do and be thankful that you're able to do them. That was a more broad aspect as to how I maintain being so productive or as productive as I am. Now at the fitness aspect. Um, with the fall and winter seasons coming, this is when I, I won't say now, but I used to would typically fall off. We don't do that anymore. Of course, when it's cold outside, when it's rainy or snowing, dark, no sunlight, like I don't like leaving my house. I just do not. Like I'd rather stay inside. I love the sun. I love being outside. 
it helps me it feels good it's good for you like the fall and winter seasons are just not for me i don't like being cold i don't like bundling up i don't like putting on a million layers of clothes but it is what it is you have to grow out of things like that um some stuff is just inevitable so in the fitness aspect as to how i stay productive when it comes to being productive and making sure i get to the gym do what i need to do is not changing up my wardrobe this is for me personally i like to wear cute outfits to the gym of course so i don't stop doing that just because it gets cold outside if i like to wear shorts and a t-shirt to the gym i'm gonna wear shorts and t-shirt to the gym even if it's freezing outside do i need to put on a jacket some sweats over it yeah but when i get there i'm still cute and i'm still wearing what i want to wear to the gym it helps like i said before looking presentable and dressing and being the person you want to be at all times that's something that helps me still wear your cute gym fits still make yourself feel good and look good when it comes to food prepping things that you normally wouldn't prep so that they're already ready for you our coffee maker we drink coffee every morning a cup of coffee got one that sets an alarm not an alarm but has a timer on it so we set a time for seven o'clock in the morning for it to start brewing our coffee so when we get up, we come in, it's ready, we pour it, and we drink it. Um, same thing for food. Prep your meals. We make our meals before um, our training. At, like I have, I do the majority of my training um, after school hours. So that'll be after three. And if I'm at home, I'll cook like our sides that we're having for dinner and have them ready for when we get home. Cook the main meal or like the protein cook it when we get home so that everything else is already ready. Normally, if I'm working till 9.30 at night, we'll pull through the drive through But to help stay on track, make those sides or I'll prep the entire meal before we leave so that it's ready when we just get home. Prep stuff that you normally wouldn't prep so that it's ready for you. It takes less time to make and get ready. It takes less motivation to have to, oh, I have to spend two hours cooking and blah, blah, blah. Just have it ready for you. Another thing that comes with these holidays and fall seasons is all the good food. I am a victim. I love to eat. I love Thanksgiving. I love Christmas food. I love it all. And I splurge in it. I do. So my advice or what I do is I don't stop myself from eating what I want to eat. I just don't. Eat what you want to eat. Just eat it in moderation. Don't eat five plates of macaroni and cheese just because you like it and it's Thanksgiving. If you like mac and cheese, make you a plate of mac and cheese, but don't make 20 plates and then regret it later. But also don't limit yourself to where, oh, I can't have any mac and cheese because I'm on a diet. Like, girl, eat yourself some mac and cheese. So during the holidays, I just remember to eat what I want to eat, just don't overeat. My goal is to eat enough to fuel, but not eat enough to feel full, if that makes sense. Aim for being 80% full. Something else that I have grown to love are podcasts. I really have never been a podcast girl until this year. I've always been a music girl in the gym. I've like when I'm at work, listen to music, watch YouTube videos, but I've really gotten into podcasts. I like to listen to the Huberman Lab podcast by Andrew Huberman. It's my favorite so far. I listen to that like while I'm in the gym sometimes. I'll listen to it while I'm on a walk. I'll put it on as background noise um, when I'm cleaning the house or when I'm at work. If you're sitting down feeling guilty for not being productive or not having motivation to go up and do this or this, look it up. Look up a podcast that'll tell you, well, a credited one, that can help you figure out why you're feeling this way, help you figure out what to do when you feel this way. And it helps. It helped me. I listen to the Huberman podcast on motivation and it's like a switch flipped it's it really does help listening to people that have gone through what you're going through and listening to people that are doing what you want to be doing something else that helps is the idea that you are out and doing this and that and getting this and that done while someone else is sitting at home but says they have the same goals as you Fall in love with being productive. Fall in love with being busy. You'll never be this young and beautiful and capable ever again as you are in this moment. So use it. 
And then the last couple things that I want to touch on, setting goals and giving yourself rewards. When it comes to my eating, I like to go by the 80-20 rule. So 80% of the time I'm cooking at home, being healthier, less processed food, more produce, and then 20% of the week I'm eating what I want. For me, that looks like during the week while I'm at work, working every day in and out, I'm cooking at home, prepping my meals, eating only cooked food, home cooked food, and then on the weekends, we go out to eat. I eat what I want. So set rewards and goals for yourself. Rewards do help. Not too often to the point where it's canceling out the productivity and progress you've made, but setting rewards does help. And then lastly, I already touched base on this, but saving your downtime for after you finished what you needed to do. Me personally, I do not like taking breaks. When I have a list of things to do, I like to knock them out quickly. So if I need to go to the gym, I need to go to the gym before I sit down. If, if the gym is the last thing on my to-do list, I'll finish my to-do list and go to the gym. Not finish my to-do list, go sit down for a second because I've been moving and then go to the gym. I have to get it all done or I'll end up sitting and taking that sit down break for the next three hours then who wants to go to the gym it's time to cook dinner by then just go to the gym honestly that's about it those are the main things that have helped me stay productive that i suggest if you need help finding motivation or getting out of a laziness slump um those are the things that i did i would definitely start with making a to-do list i love to physically write things down and as you will hear if you go listen to the Huberman podcast, writing things down chemically in your brain helps you remember and get them done. So I physically write things down in my journal, go make a to-do list, mark your things off as you do them, and I promise it will help. So when it comes to your discipline and procrastination, productivity, motivation, things like that, I hope that you try some of these things because they really did help me. I have not always been as productive as I am today. That all happened abruptly because I chose to make the change. So I hope that these things help. Let me know if you need help with anything else. I'll gladly give any suggestions and hope to see you next time.